This is going to be a study on the subject of preservation. Psalms 12, 6 through 7 says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So, I believe the King James Bible is the preserved words of God, because God told us to keep His words, so how could he do this if he didn't keep them himself? John fourteen twenty three says, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Revelation twenty two eighteen warns against adding to the words of God. Revelation twenty two nineteen warns about taking away from the words. And if God allowed his words to just vanish, then he would then how would he expect us to keep them? It takes a supernatural act of God to keep his words throughout each generation. Matthew 4 and verse 4 says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We need every word, not just the message. And Psalms 12, 6 through 7 says he preserved his words, not just the word or idea or thought or message, but the words. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. I don't believe God has any hidden books of the Bible that haven't been discovered. And books like the book of Enoch aren't the word of God. The only place he wanted his books to be hidden is in the heart of the saint. But if he didn't preserve his words, then he hid them from the saints, making it impossible for saints to hide it in their heart. Uh, what would be the point in God having men write his words in the original copies and then not preserve it? James one twenty one says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. If God didn't preserve his words, then how do we know the verses on salvation are correct? How do we know John 3.16 is true? How do we know 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 isn't leaving something out of the gospel? How do we know verses like Romans 4, 5 and Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 are true? How do we know they've not been changed and have a word added or taken away? Can we know that we have a book that tells us how to get our soul saved and be sure? The Bible teaches we can have assurance of salvation. Can we really have assurance of salvation? If we aren't even sure that we have all the words of God without error. I don't believe God who made the worlds would not preserve his book. I believe he's preserved his book all throughout time. And the same way he was able to uh, tell men what to write is the same way he's able to get the Bible to me even today in 2018. If God can get the exact words to men in the originals, then he could also preserve it. The originals would be what Moses wrote, what Isaiah wrote, what Solomon wrote, and so on and so forth. The original copies. Uh, but now there is no original copy on earth. I don't have the original copies that Moses wrote on a piece of paper or what Paul wrote on a piece of paper many who claim to believe the Bible will say they believe the word of God is perfect in the original autographs meaning they believe that the Bible is perfect on the actual piece of paper that Moses wrote or Isaiah wrote but they don't believe it's perfect now they deny preservation that we're talking about today the words of God they say we're perfect in, in the originals, but they haven't been preserved all the way to today. So when you look on their statement of faith, it will say, we believe the word of God is perfect and inerrant in the original autographs. So they're not Bible believers. So don't be tricked by them saying they believe the Bible is perfect because they really don't. Because there is no originals left. The words of God were perfect in the originals, and they have been preserved all the way to today. 
and the King James Bible is perfect and without error. Matthew twenty four thirty five says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Is that a lie? Has his words passed away? If they're not here no more, then they've passed away. First uh, Peter one twenty five says, But the word of the Lord endureth forever. If God has promised to preserve his word, and they won't pass away, and they're going to endure forever, then they have to be here somewhere. And I believe they are in the King James Bible. And many will use the other English translations of the Bible, but those are corrupt. Those actually have things added. They have things subtracted. They have things changed. But the King James Bible is perfect. There are no errors. And the only way your King James Bible could have an error is if the publisher had a printing error. It wouldn't be because God didn't preserve it because not all the King James Bibles have printing errors. Uh, your Bible is preserved. It's here for you today to read. I believe the King James Bible is preserved because of what the Bible says about the Word of God. Romans 15, 4 says, Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. If the things written aforetime were written for our learning and it's not preserved, then we really don't have what God wanted us to learn. Isaiah 30 and verse 8 says, Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. If Isaiah wrote it, and it said it's going to be around forever, then it has to be around even today. The Bible says in Psalms 12, 6, that the words of the Lord are pure. If you believe the Bible then you believe the words are pure. Proverbs twenty two twenty one talks about knowing the certainty of the words of truth. The King James Bible is certain, and it is complete truth. And if you really believe the Bible, then you believe what it says about the Bible. If it isn't preserved words, then verses like those that I just read are complete lies. The book of Titus says God cannot lie. And Paul says, let God be true, but every man a liar. So according to the Bible, men are liars, but God isn't a liar. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. He said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Paul said, we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Some people corrupt the words, and that is the people who put out the new translations of the Bible. And Jesus Christ himself called copies of the Old Testament Scripture. He said, did he, you never read in the scriptures? He was always saying, have you not read? Have you not read? He would talk about the scriptures of the prophets being fulfilled. He believed what the Old Testament said about himself because he believed every word of it. Even though he didn't have the original writings, but copies of copies, he still believed those copies of the original writing. Was Jesus Christ just some dumb hillbilly who thought God preserved his words? Or was he greater than Solomon, greater than Jonah before Abraham and God manifested in the flesh? If somebody like him believed the Bible and he only had copies of the originals, then that shows me I need to believe the Bible. You don't see him going around saying a better word would be this, a better word would be that, and this word should really be this. You say, well, what is the significance of Jesus Christ calling, calling it Scripture? 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. If all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and Jesus Christ called the copies of God's Word Scripture, then he had something in his hand that was inspired. And if he called it Scripture, then he believed it was preserved to him today in those copies. And back then in those copies, God guided men to write his book. And Second Peter one twenty one says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So God guided the translators of the King James Bible. These translators had the inspired words of God, and they translated them into English, and God preserved his word this way. 
The King James Bible is the inspired and preserved words of God. Notice it said in 2 Timothy 3.16, All scripture is given by inspiration, and not was given by inspiration. So to say the words of God were inspired in the originals, but yet not today, that makes a liar out of God in 2 Timothy 3.16 because it says all scripture is given by inspiration. So we presently have the inspired and preserved words of God. If God didn't preserve the words and if the Bible contains errors and there are things missing, then how do we really know what is right? We would just have to guess and go by what we think is right. And man can't do this. We aren't smart enough or wise enough. God has to do it for us. He has to do it supernaturally. He had to preserve his words throughout every generation so that every person has an opportunity to read his words. And if he wants us to believe the gospel, then he is going to preserve it all the way throughout time. So never let anyone take your faith in the book.